Some people will talk about the weight gain that comes from soda. Some people will talk about the, the burnout, right? The fatigue, because you're literally pushing your stress hormones. I agree with all that, I, I really do. But I look at it as like the mental health aspect as well. Because what people don't see is that if you continue to push dopamine, which is an excitatory neurotransmitter, you may be on the other side, wiping out a lot of your serotonin, which is that antidepressive, feel good neurotransmitter, or GABA, which is the anti-anxiety. All right, everybody, we're back with a brand new Cabral concept. I want to bring you a fun show here today as well. This is what happens in your body when you drink a soda. But honestly, it can go for any beverage that you like that contains both sugar and caffeine. So I talked a little bit about the week before on energy drinks, popular energy drinks, what they contain. Some of them are artificial sweeteners, some of them are actual sweeteners, and the caffeine contained in them. Today I'm talking about a Coca-Cola, a Pepsi, or any of your favorite drinks, maybe an energy drink as well, but it contains sugar and it contains caffeine. So I actually saw a really short video that Dr. Mercola put out. I love giving credit where credit's due, especially to Dr. Mercola. He's been doing this since like the year 2000 before any but he was really out there talking uh, about natural health on social media or even before then on his blog back in the day. So again, I always like to give a little credit where credit's due, whether you like Dr. Mercola, don't like Dr. Mercola, I just wanna give credit where credit's due. All right, so here's what the video said, and I'm gonna add a little bit of my own two cents as well to go a little bit more in depth because it was like a 30 second just short video which are fun great idea though for a show and i want to bring this to you because there's actually a lot of physiology uh, pathophysiology meaning like a disease progression that can happen when you drink a soda especially when it's done on a daily basis and that's going to lead then into tomorrow's show which is how to better balance your blood sugar so definitely stay tuned for that all right episode uh 2811 is today. So if you want to find all of the show notes, the three big takeaways, head on over to stephencabral.com slash 2811. All right, here's what happens within 10 minutes, right? Just 10 minutes of you drinking your favorite soda. So within the first 10 minutes, for the most people, they've consumed that beverage, 10, 15 minutes maximum, right? So inside of that beverage could be somewhere between seven and 12 teaspoons of sugar. We're just gonna say it's 10 teaspoons of sugar. That's a lot of sugar. That much sweetness, like think about this right now. So you go over, you've got a, maybe a packet of sugar, or not a pa well, let's say a packet of sugar, okay. Imagine opening up 10 packets of sugar or go into your cupboard, your pantry, pulling out a, a sugar box, whatever you wanna call it, and then you take out a spoon and you put 10 uh, teaspoons of sugar in your mouth, or you rip open 10 packets of sugar and you put them all in your mouth. It would make you nauseous. Like it would make most people pretty sick. You would never do that. And the way that you're able to do that when drinking a soda is that there's a balance in it called phosphoric acid. And that, force, that phosphoric acid actually works in a few different ways. So one, um, it adds flavor to it, but other, it's an acidic-based preservative, which then allows that drink not to ferment or grow mold, et cetera. So when we look at this, the extreme sugar is balanced by the phosphoric acid, and that allows you to consume it and not throw it up. So that's point number one. It's pretty violent in and of itself. Now, the second one is this. Within about 30 to 40 minutes, that caffeine is fully consumed. Most of these sodas now have anywhere from 120 to over 200 milligrams of caffeine. Now, that's a full day's worth of caffeine that you would get in like a cup and a half of coffee or a, even a small Starbucks coffee, which is very, very strong. So it's a good amount of caffeine. Well, what happens? Well, when that caffeine enters your system by the, at the 20, 30 mark, but certainly by 40 minutes, you've absorbed that caffeine, liver's processed it, and now you're moving into, or have already moved into fight or flight. That means you're gonna get dilated pupils, an accelerated heart rate. You might start to feel maybe even a little shaky. You might even feel more focused, right? You might get some of the benefits of that caffeine because I'm not saying that there's not some benefits there. What happens though, is that now you're in fight or flight. So it's not just about the accelerated heart rate or the focus or the little bit of tremors, anything like that. What actually is happening is your body's producing more norepinephrine. Now that's an excitatory neurotransmitter. 
And then on its uh, other side is a, a stress hormone that you may have heard of called cortisol. So cortisol now is going to, if there's not enough glucose, it's going to start to break down more stored glycogen. The problem is at the very same time, your body's getting all of the sugar coming in from that soft drink, right? From that soda. Now, even if it's sugar free, your liver is going to start to break down more of that stored glycogen as well. And that stored glycogen is going to move into the bloodstream and spike your blood sugar. So either way, Typically caffeine or, sorry, always with caffeine, but caffeine with sugar or caffeine without sugar, you're, most of the time you're getting a blood sugar spike. And you can just test that for yourself with a simple glucometer or a continuous glucose monitor right at home. Now, on top of those stress hormones entering your bloodstream and sugar rising, now your body has to say, okay, what is going on here? And it's going to say, oh, we're being rewarded. So that's the reward center of the brain. Now, there's no reason why we're being rewarded. We just drank a soda, but your body gets this spike in dopamine as well. And dopamine is the reward center of the brain, or at least I shouldn't say reward center of the brain, but it's a reward-based neurotransmitter. You did something, you got pleasure from it, that pleasure leads to dopamine. Now, that's a little bit dangerous in the future as well, because caffeine and sugar leads to a dopamine rush. Caffeine then leads to also a fight or flight based rush. So now you get pleasure, dopamine, and you get focus, and that can become very addictive. Now, for the downside, after we get these excitatory neurotransmitters, and we get the excitatory stress hormones, and we get the sugar going in, now the pancreas has to say, okay, we need to lower the elevated blood sugar. So now we're going to start to do what? Well, we're gonna to start to produce insulin to be able to go in the bloodstream and get that sugar out of the blood and into the cells or store it as body fat, right? That's what it needs to do so that it's, that's its job. Now, once that begins to happen, and that might take an hour, two hours, whatever it might be to based on your metabolism, then what happens is when the blood sugar gets moved out of the bloodstream, and sometimes you might even drop in a low blood sugar because you produce so much insulin, you drop into what? Well, hypoglycemia or lowered blood sugar, and what does it show up as? Fatigue, lethargy, brain fog. Now, what do you want? Well, you want the reward again. You want the pleasure. You want the dopamine, and you also want that focus and energy back with the caffeine. So what do you reach for? Another caffeinated beverage, another soda. And that's how this becomes so addictive. Now, think about this. For children, it becomes hyper addictive because for them, they're typically processing it faster, smaller livers, smaller ability to be able to regulate these processes sometimes as well. They get more push in one direction. So we have to be really careful for both, for both adults and children and understand that when we're going into this, if we're consuming the soda, we have to know that there are real repercussions that come along with it. And I would, I'm honestly like some people will talk about the weight gain that comes from soda. Some people will talk about the, the burnout, right? The fatigue, because you're literally pushing your stress hormones. I agree with all that. I, I really do. But I look at it as like the mental health aspect as well, because what people don't see is that if you continue to push dopamine, which is an excitatory neurotransmitter, you may be on the other side, wiping out a lot of your serotonin which is that antidepressive feel good neurotransmitter or GABA, which is the anti-anxiety. Because the more you push the excitatory form of neurotransmitters, let's just call that the get up and go like norepinephrine and cortisol, the more you may need to produce and not be able to the serotonin and the GABA. So what happens is we can actually lead people more to become addicted to these sugary and caffeinated beverages, especially kids with all these energy drinks, right? And then when they crash, they don't necessarily understand why. They just know that this thing gives them energy. And when they don't have it, they can't focus in school. So they need to turn to what? Adderall or prescription drugs, which work even better, right? Or the caffeinated and the sugary beverages. Then yes, that can lead to type two diabetes, later in life, high blood pressure, as well as cardiovascular disease, and potentially even Alzheimer's, dementia, et cetera, by producing more norepinephrine and uh, cortisol. And potentially Parkinson's with the, uh, which I think there's a real possibility of depleted 
uh, dopamine as you continue to push and push dopamine. So it's not as simple as just saying, it's just a soda, no big deal, or it's just a, a fountain drink you know, that you're getting, no big deal. Okay, yeah, no big deal once a month, right? No big deal every once in a while. To me, big deal a couple times a week. And then look at it, a really big deal a couple times a day. So let's just be cautious, that's all. Let's just be cautious in what we say, everything in moderation, you know, every once in a while, no big deal. Yes, every once in a while, no big deal. Maybe a big deal for a child with their developing mind and brain, but also a really big deal if you're not already healthy and well. So if you don't have balanced blood sugar, if you don't have balanced mood, if you don't have balanced energy, to me, cutting out the caffeine, cutting out the sugar, at least when combined, is of utmost paramount importance. And I'm actually far more okay with the caffeine than I am the sugar. Now, having said that, I need to qualify it. I'm not okay with 300, 400 milligrams of caffeine a day. I'm okay with like doing a half decaf, half regular coffee in the morning, right? Like after your breakfast, like that's more what I'm okay with. Right? If you want that and that little bit gets you going, makes you feel good, no issues whatsoever. Some people tolerate it much better than others. I have lots of podcasts on caffeine. I'll link them up here today because I don't want to leave you just with a 60-second soundbite there that I think it's okay for everybody to be consuming mass amounts of caffeine. I'm not. 100, 200 milligrams a day for most people, okay. If you have anxiety, if you're more of that Vata body type, no, not, not okay, right? But most people, they can handle that. Now, when you combine it with sugar, that's when it becomes far more dangerous, far more detrimental, especially when done chronically. Hopefully this was helpful. All the show notes, the three big takeaways, previous shows on caffeine, and much more will be available right now at stephencabral.com slash 2811. Stay tuned tomorrow as well, where we help you and work on balancing your blood sugar levels using a specific type of intermittent fasting combined with a certain time window and calorie restriction only on certain days of the week. Check that out. Brand new research that'll be coming in tomorrow. All right. Take care, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.